Hi, I'm Greg Dye, and I'm the Executive Director with the Duke Gleamer Center. The Duke Gleamer Center sits just off of Duke University's main campus, but it houses about 230 animals and 14 different species, making it one of the largest and most diverse collections of lemurs found anywhere in the world outside of Madagascar. The mission of Duke Lemur Center is actually threefold. It's education, conservation, and research. Research being our primary mission. We serve as a genetic safety net for these animals, and it's important that we maintain a healthy and viable collection of these animals in the event that they become extinct in the wild. Let's go take a look at what goes on here behind the scenes at the Duke Lemur Center. My name is uh, Dr. Matthew Bortz, and I'm a paleontologist at the Division of Fossil Primates, where I'm the curator of this fossil collection. And part of what we do here at the Division of Fossil Primates is we try to figure out how the lemurs that are at the Lemur Center are related to the researchers who are on the ground trying to understand these incredible animals. And one of the things that we have to do to understand the relationship between lemurs and humans is to go into the fossil record to kind of connect those evolutionary dots from living lemurs to living humans. In order to do that, we go all over the world searching for fossils that kind of tell us about the major branches in primate evolution. And so here at the Division of Fossil Primates, our fossil preparator, uh, which is this type of paleontologist who removes the rock from fossils is Vicky. And Vicky is a very, very uh, experienced fossil preparator who's worked on dinosaurs, she's worked on mammals. And so here she's helping us discover uh, these fossils that were removed from the field, but we don't really know what they look like until they can be fully exhumed from the rock. And once we've done that, uh, we can actually start to do research and understand these animals back in a lab. We can do uh, take measurements on them, we can compare them to other animals, we can compare them to other mammals from the site that they came from, um, and share our discoveries with other researchers. And one way that we do that, and the way that we try to preserve these fossils, is by making copies of them. And so Vicky uh, is also um, kind of a, an expert in making those copies. And in order to make these copies, um, she goes in and makes a mold. Um, she then goes in through it's a, a multi-day, sometimes multi-week process to actually mix up the materials, make the mold uh, to surround the fossil, and then very carefully remove that material from the fossil, not damaging the fossil, and then filling that mold with epoxy, which is basically a specialized kind of plastic that can be eventually dried and popped out of the mold so that we have an exact copy of the fossil we can share with other researchers that we can keep here and we can even let visitors interact with because some of our fossils are actually very delicate. The other way that we study the fossils and try to preserve them is by uh, a very large-scale scanning project that we have going on here at the Division of Fossil Primates. This is, very, this is a little crisper. With the CT scan, we can go inside the fossil. And in the past, people would actually saw open these fossils or saw open bones to get at that information, destroying the fossil in the process. Um, we don't have to destroy it. We can just digitally dissect our fossils, go in and study things like how the brain is put together, how the nose is put together, because lemurs use their sense of smell a lot to understand the world around them. So we can look at these extinct lemurs that we have from the fossil record and actually understand how they use their noses to navigate the world too. Um, and so with this technology, uh, we can become even, we can ask bigger and bigger questions about the paleontological record than we could before. My name is Andrea Katz. I'm a conservation specialist here in the conservation department of the Duke Lemur Center. What, what I've been doing over the last two years is developing new collaborations with the government of Madagascar to extend the Lemur Center's 
expertise and experience to assist Madagascar with their own captive breeding programs. Um, my name is Charlie Welch. I'm conservation coordinator here at the Duke Lemur Center. And, uh, and what that means is I oversee our conservation work in Madagascar in particular um, in the Saba region of, of northeastern Madagascar. We do have so many different activities working with the communities, so it can be anything from over overseeing, checking on what's going on with our reforestation activities to um, a teacher training, family planning, and getting uh, reproductive choices in the form of contraceptives to to women, local women that, that are interested in that. Hello, my name is Britt Keith. I am the Primate Technician Supervisor here at the Duke Lemur Center. I oversee the animal colony and the staff who works with animal husbandry, which is the care of the animals here. And one of the most important things that we do here is prepare the appropriate diets for the animals every day. We have many species of lemurs here at the Duke Lemur Center and they all get fed different diets depending on who they are, what species they are. The rough lemurs uh, are huge frugivores. Uh, they will eat vegetables as well, which is what they get but their gut passage time is very, very fast. So sometimes we feed them grapes, they come out the other end in about four hours. We have uh, nine IIs in our population and their diet's quite different than all the other animals in the colony. They are insectivorous, but they have a bit of a sweet tooth. So one of the things that we prepare for them is what we call our gruel. And our gruel is a mixture of um, monkey chow uh, that we uh, add water to and make like a porridge. And then we flavor it. Sometimes it's applesauce. A lot of times it's honey or nut butters. Um, our shafak population are, <laughs> are uh, pretty much uh, foliverse animals. So they graze every day in, in the wild on leaves and seeds. And they also eat bark. And sometimes they'll go to the ground and eat soil. And that is our ringtails with an alarm call. <laughs> uh, when we feed the animals, we have a lot of ways that we can do that. Some are very aggressive if they're with a family group that they want to uh, get all the food for themselves. We have to make sure we manage that in ways that other animals can get to eat too. So we present the food in various ways that helps them spend time foraging for their food, gives other animals a chance to look for other pieces of food around the enclosure. Like if we have a group of five animals, we'll always present the food perhaps in six different places so the animals that are being displaced can go to different spaces in the environment. Hi, my name is Meg Dye, and I'm the Curator of Behavioral Management here at the Duke Lemur Center. A large part of my job is working with all the departments when it comes to training and enrichment. Now, we train for a variety of reasons, for teaching our animals to voluntarily participate in husbandry and research, and also provide daily enrichment for the animal for mental stimulation. So to give you an example of how we train the animals for voluntary participation is an example with one of our mouse lemurs. So in this footage, we're teaching the animal how to voluntarily enter a transfer chute to go into a closed chamber in which in time, it's gonna learn how to touch a screen and help us with some Alzheimer's research. We also work with different animals on teaching them the voluntary husbandry behaviors. So in this example, we have one of our Shafak, Pompeia, who is actually learning how to put herself into a net. Occasionally we need to use a net if we just need to temporarily restrain an animal for a quick injection, for example. But if we can teach the animal and ask them, will you please go into the net, it makes it into a game. 
So another part of our training sessions is shape recognition. We actually teach the animals one particular shape. It's kind of like a name tag. So if they learn to go to a star, then they always go to a star during the training session. In this case with Pompeia, she has learned to go to the black cross. And so when her trainer puts on the ground a variety of different shapes, she simply asked, will you go find your black cross? And she does it 100% of the time. It's just a fun game. It's a fun challenge for them during a training session. We also provide a wide variety of different types of daily enrichment for the animals, and they can come in all different forms. One of them is something that we offer with the public, and that's painting. So the public can come in and watch the animals do a painting with lemurs. So while the training and enrichment looks like it's just fun, and it actually really is, it actually has a deeper purpose, and that is for us to maintain the psychological well-being of all the animals that we're responsible for caring for. So I'm Bobby Shopper, I'm the uh, supervising veterinarian at the Duke Lemur Center. The vet services is a really important part of the lemur center. We're responsible for the health and care of the animals. Um, we maintain uh, the appropriate diets. Um, we look after ill animals. We're part of the reproductive program. We help with research, uh, sample collection, and so forth. We work in conjunction with other zoos and um, institutions that have captive lemur populations and it's part of the SSP or species survival plan for each species um, and what that plan does is it, it the um, they look at which animals are represented or overrepresented or underrepresented in the captive population from that figure out what the the biggest genetic diversity would be from, you know, pairing a certain animal with another animal. One of our rough lemurs came in and um, we found that it had twin babies. It was a very exciting day. The, the timing of the filming was perfect for that. Actually, no, that's a baby right there. Okay. I can only yeah. get one of them. Do you want me to get it? Can you get the subject case? I'm Erin Emke, and I'm the Director of Research here at the Duke Lemur Center. So as a research center, we accommodate all different branches of research the one thing that they all have in common is that it's all non-invasive. Under that non-invasive umbrella, we're able to accommodate a huge range of projects. Cognition, locomotion, genetics, genomics, energetics, biomechanics. You name it, we find a way to make it happen. And it's usually quite fun for the animal. It's great enrichment for them. A few of our current projects focus on cognition and sensory ecology. By studying the lemur's cognitive abilities, we can better understand for one, how smart they are, how their brains work, and how they learn. So for example, right now, we're studying uh, by giving them different cognitive tasks. How, do, how does each individual perform? How do they compare between species? And then how does that compare with monkeys and apes, as well as other mammals? In terms of sensory ecology, there's two really fun projects going on right now. One is using a touchscreen computer to study color vision abilities in rough lemurs. And also, lemurs are very much driven by olfactory cues. So what do they learn by smelling another individual? So we're able to collect a scent from a lemur just by rubbing a cotton tip across their scent glands and then offering that scent to another lemur. How do they respond to that scent? What information do they gleam? And we know they understand an, an individual's identity, their sex, their age, their health status, their reproductive status, even their immune complex, they can smell uh, just through their scent glands. So why do we do so much research here? Well, 
Lemurs are amazing animals. They're so diverse and fascinating. For one, we need to learn more about them, just so that we can better conserve them in the wild and better care for them in captivity. We need to learn more about their natural history, their ecology, their behavior, their reproduction, so that we can protect those variables in Madagascar. But also, you can almost think of lemurs as living fossils. They are at the base of the primate evolutionary tree. So by learning more about their biological and physiological processes, we learn more about the evolution of primates in general. Thank you for joining us on this virtual tour of the Lemur Center. We hope it's given you a better understanding of what it is we do here and has inspired you to support our mission. If you wish to support the conservation of these beautiful animals, we invite you to join us at lemur.duke.edu and click on the donate button.